What does it mean to have Jesus as Lord? Probably a lot more than you think. How to know if Jesus is your Lord and that you have the right Jesus and the right Lord. What's up? I'm Pastor Brian with Empowered Christian Ministries, here with another lesson from our Driveway Discipleship Program. Empowering you to be a better follower of Jesus in just 10 minutes a day. Jesus is Lord. Adonai Yahweh. Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. See, most Christians say Jesus is their Savior. But some don't submit to him as Lord. Are you embracing Jesus as your Lord in these three ways? Is he the Lord as in the capital L-O-R-D, Lord God Almighty? Is he your only Lord? Meaning, is it him alone that you entrust your salvation and life to? And is he your Lord your king and your master, that you live in submission and obedience to. Number one, God is Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. In Exodus 6, verses 2 and 3, God spoke to Moses from the burning bush, saying, I am Yahweh. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty, but by my name Yahweh I did not make myself known to them. The sacred name of God, written in scripture over 6,800 times, doesn't say Yahweh or Jehovah. It's just the four Hebrew letters Y-H-V-H, and this stands for yod He vav He. God's name was respectfully considered unmutterable by the ancient Masoretic Jews. So these four letters were written with the vowel marks underneath for Adonai, which means my Lord. So this would be read aloud instead. This tradition even continues in most Bible translations today with an uppercase L-O-R-D used in place of God's name. Exodus 3 verses 13 through 15 teaches God's sacred name is derived from his eternal self-existent nature. Deuteronomy 10 verse 17 says, For the Lord, Yahweh, your God, is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God. Psalm 135 5 says, for I know that the Lord, Yahweh, is great. Our Lord is above all gods. In Isaiah 45, verses 21 to 23, God says, Was it not I, the Lord, Yahweh? And there is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a Savior. There is none besides me. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is no other. To me, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear allegiance. For 1,500 years prior to Jesus' arrival, the Lord was synonymous for God, and God's lordship was inexplicably connected to his divine attributes. Number two, Jesus is Lord, not just lowercase Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. When the early followers of Jesus called him their Lord, they were bestowing upon him a title and a status that previously belonged only to God. Consider how we just read how God alone is the only Lord and only Savior. Yet, Jude uh, chapter 1, verse 25 says, To the only God, our Savior, through Christ Jesus our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority, before all time 
and now and forever. And how we just read that every knee will bow to God alone. Yet, Philippians 2, verses 10 through 11, tells us it is at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Likewise, Acts verse or chapter 17, verse 24, acknowledges that God alone is the creator and the sustainer and Lord, saying, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth. Nonetheless, 1 Corinthians 8, verse 6 says, Yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things, and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we exist. See, the doctrine of the Holy Trinity helps us articulate and better understand how Jesus can share in the same glory and honor that God gets. Romans 10 verses 9 through 13 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This last verse is a quote from Joel uh, 2, verse 32, where Lord here was the sacred name Yahweh, being understood as referring to Jesus. Jesus is Lord because he's also the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, God, Yahweh of the Old Testament. We're saved by believing in Jesus as the Lord God of old and putting our personal trust in him as our Lord and Savior and surrendering to him now as the Lord of our lives. Number three, is Jesus your Lord? I didn't ask if you call him Lord. I'm asking if you live as though he is the Lord of your life. In Malachi 1 verse 6, God says, A son honors his father and a servant his master. And then if I am a father, where is my honor? And if I am a master... Where is my fear, says the Lord, Yahweh, of hosts? Do you have a healthy fear and reverence of him? Throughout my sinful, rebellious years, I believed Jesus as my Savior, but it wasn't until much later in life that I embraced him as the Lord of my life. Do you follow him, submit to him, obey him, and seek to please him in all the ways as your king and your master? See, this is important. In Matthew 7, verse 21, Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So it's not what you say, it's what you do. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3 does say, no one can say that Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. But confidence Jesus is your Lord comes from professing your allegiance to Jesus earnestly from the heart and demonstrating your faith through your actions. As James 1 verse 22 says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. 
In Luke 6, verses 46 to 49, Jesus said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He's like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose, the stream broke against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the stream broke against it, immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Take Jesus' words to heart and obey him. 1 Timothy 6, 14-15 says, Keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Colossians 1 verse 10 encourages us to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord God. Heavenly Father, make me more like your Son, my Lord Jesus. Empower me by your Spirit. Help me live for you to trust, surrender, and obey. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would like a free two-page PDF of this lesson and a couple of action steps to get started, just click the link below or go and visit our website at empoweredchristian.org forward slash driveway dash discipleship. If you like this video, please like and share it with someone. And be sure to check out all of our other lessons and come back tomorrow. As always, be empowered and go and advance the kingdom of God today. God bless.